In the SOLIDWORKS lecture earlier, we generated this whole table in a, in a drawing and um, cleaned it up a little bit. But basically, this part at four inches by six and a half inches, this really could, um, could sit on our, our tooling plate, our small universal tooling plate to, um, to cut. Uh, so we would um, have some material a little bit oversized. The decision would be, um, you know, looking at where the uh, the clamps would be in position. Do we cut all the interior geometry, which is always a risk that we drill all these holes while we have plenty of material to clamp onto, but then we run around the outside and all of a sudden something doesn't clean up, right? So uh, we have to make sure that the the 390, if we're picking stock. You know, when we go through our workflow, first decision is always the um, the stock, and I think this was a half inch thickness. So is it already flat enough? Is it going to you know have any scratches or scores in it? Uh, what do we need to do for the uh, the tool library to um, um, to help with? Noticing that there are probably eight different tools. How how tight a tolerance do we have to be on these holes? Because if I can take the, the smallest drill, say this 201, for the, um, well, these weren't called out as quarter 20s. I changed the four holes in the corners over to quarter 20. So if you're using this drawing, you can stay with, uh, with their sizes uh, to make your own. Uh, but if you go into my model, I turn this one into a countersink so that we'd have something to talk about countersinks with. And I turn these into taps so we'd have something to talk about taps with. All right, so when you load this part, oh, that wasn't it. <laughs> that wouldn't be, be interesting, too. Uh, when you load this part from the, or download it from uh, Canvas and, uh, and pull it in, it's pretty much going to come in with um, the geometry, and I put some, uh, some more fillets on it, so uh, we could, um, could uh, generate that geometry. So look down at all the drill sizes, and there are quite a few different sizes. Plus, I did the overrun in the corner, and uh, the slot we're not so concerned with. Um, and if we have time, we're going to say that this last hole, which was the 734-ish, um, is a precision that we're going to try to, uh, to bore, circular, interpolate. And uh, I want to be able to stop the machine and, uh, and inspect and be able to get back to that point after it's roughed out the, the material, be able to get back to that point to inspect it. And then if I need to put some more comp into it, make adjustments at the control, then I want to be able to start the program from that location and, and build out from there. So even though this has all these hole, uh, hole sizes, um, even the, uh, the 5 sixteenths, I'm pretty confident that I can take a quarter inch end mill and have it open up for that hole size, which uh, 5 sixteenths uh, through 323, 328s um, in those values. I think we can get pretty close and interpolate most of these holes after we peck through with the 201. Now, from a production standpoint, that whole contour and getting that tool into place, either with the, um, uh, the contour or the bore operation, um, that's going to take a little more time than a straight drill. If I'm making a couple, then uh, a couple of these, then I'm saving time on setting up seven different tools. All right. But if I'm going into the hundreds of these, we probably want to do the tool changes and get more efficient on the um, on the tooling uh, to build it out. So, you know, again, it's kind of that workflow and process that we have to to think through of um, what are the tolerances, how many. And do I really need to be concerned with, um, you know, those, uh, those seconds, um, you know, the seconds that become minutes and, um, and, uh, minutes that become days. All right. So, and all of it comes back to dollars. All right. So I'm going to set for the, uh, the shape. We said, uh, we could go four inches. Uh, really don't have a good center point. So, um, uh, First thing to do when we're in this assembly, and I'm going to, I'm going to stay with this assembly strategy. I think there's enough, uh, to be said for leaving the original geometry original. And then anything we need to add is, is separate. So, um, as a, as a strategy, being able to wrap the stock around this, uh, puts us into that top down strategy inside of the, of the modeler. So, 
Uh, first thing we need to do is save this. Rebuild and save. So this is going to be A4. Um, and then my HSM or whatever. Right. Because when I put the stock in, that previous problem was that whatever I insert and has that external reference back to this part, or sorry, to this assembly, um, as soon as I save it and it's no longer assembly one, I have a problem. I have to go in and break those relations and, and reestablish them. All right, so I'm going to insert a new part and just pick wherever because I don't really like uh, the whole um, uh, not being able to select. So we're going to set the stock. And if I go to Control-1, we're going to edit the part in the context of the assembly. So my part goes to transparency. Uh, the stock that I inserted, the new part, is all in blue, saying it's ready to do something with. So we'll go into the front plane, draw the box around it, and we had, uh, what, six... Um, 639 so maybe six and a half on the um, on the length if we're doing half inch by four inch bar stock then we're going to have to be pretty close on on the uh, the sizing so uh, that's going to be my first choice and again we're going to clamp this down to the tooling plate in some some way to, to hold on to it and after i've opened up these pockets i have a pretty good chance that at least two, three, four holes are going to magically appear underneath this thing that I'm going to be able to clamp through the pockets, but I still have to be able to stop the machine and get it into um, uh, to where I can change those clamps and restart without, uh, without any issues. All right, so 6.5 as a, as a rough cut. And then um, let's see, we'll go... Really just need to pick a point on the, um, and that should be pretty close. And I like one of them to be diagonal to uh, help with the uh, the display. So select midpoint. We'll go to midpoint, and that pretty well centers it on my uh, on my stock. All right, so the other thing is that if I saw this below the mates, that uh, below the rollback bar, then I'm just sketching inside of the assembly. I haven't really edited, with, without this being blue, I haven't really edited anything, and it's not going to let me create the, um, uh, the stock as a, as a solid. Uh, we, can, uh, we can generate our stock with a sketch, but it is, um, I don't know, um, it just it makes more sense, I guess. Is the visually it makes more sense to have the uh, the solid uh, solid geometry, and then send it over to transparency. All right, so I can visualize a little better that you know how the how the part is sitting in that uh, that stock. All right, so we rebuild, make sure everything's good. And this is a virtual component at this um, at this level. It doesn't have an outside until I tell it to save it externally. It will only exist inside of this assembly in relation to my project. All right, so I can do whatever I want with sketches um, up to modifying the uh, the original part. All right, so if I need something, I'll I'll draw it or create it. Uh, let's see. I need to get into since I did not, either I turned it off for SolidWorks. Yep, must have. All right, so we're going to launch the, uh, the CAM module, hopefully. And we'll expand out a little bit with the, um, the resolution of the screen for the projector. Lose a little bit. So we're into the, uh, the CAM module. So I've talked about uh, tool libraries, and so I have a, uh, a custom tool library, but what if I want a machine-specific library? All right, so I don't even have to have the program uh, set up yet. Uh, if there was already a tool list in the, the program, I could capture it and bring it over into my library, but we're going to create one from, uh, from start. So this is going to be a new library. 
and uh, we're going to set this up for the the Haas um, TM2 out on the uh, out on the floor or TM1. All right, so that means that tools that I put into this library uh, for my selection will also have RPMs and feed rates related to that machine, the rigidity and the max RPM of the machine. So if we go over to the uh, the flat end mill, I want a half inch for my roughing, and we'll um, and then I can paste it, and I want a quarter inch. The decision is um, since uh, I'm the tool changer, I can line these up. Uh, if I had the umbrella tool changer, I don't know that um, it's either 15 or 20 tools. I think it's 15. I don't know that I would load 10 tools into the, the that small machine. The side mount with 25 tools, first 10 tools is not a big deal to load up into this library and, and pretty much leave it there. So I'm going to include a couple that I wouldn't normally use or I, I, I may not use in this um, this program for illustration. So we'll go ahead and paste a, a 3 8 And I definitely need the, um, uh, the quarter inch. And we'll copy that one in. And uh, maybe I want a drill mill. So is there anything under the countersink? Uh, maybe a chamfer chamfer mill so we do have a chamfer mill those are all pretty big but uh, let's see what the definition looks like all right so those are both both sides and they're calling it an insert so not really what I would um, what I would expect I would probably be looking for something closer to a countersink but I'll have to um, either refer back to the uh, the pictures or um, basically, it's an end mill, two fluid end mill with the 90 degree ground on the end of it so that it can spot drill, it can chamfer, and in cases where it had to, it would, um, it would act as an end mill as well. So in that case, I need to actually create a tool. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build it as a countersink. I believe that will work. If not, we'll have to, um, to adjust it. And um, since um, it's not going to let me generate a new tool out of this uh, read-only library, I'm going to go over to my custom, new mill tool, and this is going to be, we said it was going to be a countersink, and tip angle 90 degrees, 0.25 on the diameter. And this pretty much comes to a point, so we're going to say it's a, a sharp. Shoulder length 0 0.75, 0 0.5, body length. If we needed to adjust for those, we could. Uh, main thing is this is not going to be tool number two. If we assign it tool number two, it will be tool number two, tool two forever. So I want zeros in here so that when I insert it, whatever the next available tool number is, it will pick it up. All right, so tool zero, the cutter. Speed and speed, since this is going in my library, we're going to max it at 40. The number of flutes is 2. And 40 inches a minute is probably about right All right, for the, the chamfer. Uh, the drill vertical feed rate's at 13. We'll drop that down to 10. We won't be too far off. Two and a half thousandths uh, seems pretty good. But if I'm running a, um, a 10 thousandths edge break, it's not a lot of tool load, not a lot of deflection, so I'm not really concerned um, in that respect. All right, so we're going to copy that one out of my custom into my tools. So that gives me now four tools uh, to work from, and we'll have to check and make sure that that countersink is able to mill. A lot of times the drill point-to-point -to -point, uh, tools um, can't be used for, um, well, Obviously, if we had a 135-degree um, um, screw machine drill, we wouldn't want to go milling with it, and uh, it's going to warn us that that is the case. All right, so if I say that this is my standard tools for this group, um, let's see, the we, we can stay with the, uh, the three flute. It's definitely not going to run at 10,000 RPM. At 261 surface feet, uh, it's going to be a little on the slow side. So let's go to uh, about a thou. 12 looks um, as a good starting point. 
and lost the, um, the end there. Okay, let's just take it all out. 12 and vertical. Yeah, I can still stay at 12. 3 8 flat, same thing. It's going to be able to run at 4,000 RPM. Three flutes is fine. And maybe we'll go a thou and a half on this one because it has a little more rigidity. So update all of those to 18. And that one. And 18 is about borderline of what I'd want to plunge. And then the uh, the half inch will probably slow it down, but still, or sorry, on the feed rate, we'll, we'll slow down the feed rate. And um, let's go with 2,000 on that one. So 24 is going to be pushing that machine a little bit. Uh, we would see spindle loads approaching... Now, depending on the, uh, the radial engagement, axial radial engagement, we could see uh, spindle loads starting to approach um, 30 or 40 percent, which that's going to, uh, for a light duty machine, I really don't want to see much over 50 percent at max. So 40 percent is a good, uh, good safe if uh, we're going to do anything. All right, so the very top, there is my part, A4 HSM. And I'm going to right click and copy all of those and paste them. And as I go through and select, now what I didn't do is if this is in the machine, let's see, can I undo that? No, nope, I have to delete them. Um, so I said if uh, for the custom I wanted those to be zero, and since I put these in my library, in this library, uh, let's see, the half inch should be tool number one. And I want these numbers to stick. The three eighths then will be tool, tool number two. Uh, quarter inch will be three. And then the um, countersink would be four. All right. So now we can take all of those and copy them. And they will be in the correct sequence for how they're loaded into the um, into the umbrella uh, tool changer. And we can go ahead and hit OK. So we've preloaded, and now each program I would go over that I'm going to run on that machine. I would go over and grab those four, five, six, however many tools I end up with uh, being standard tooling. I would grab those and copy, even though I'm not going to use the three eighths. It has a placeholder. It won't try and put a tool in to num tool number two. All right, so we're going to set up the job just like we normally would. Milling, uh, let's see, the stock, no. Uh, if we do the relative size box, then it finds the geometry. We're going to go from solid, and then I can pick my virtual component for the stock. Uh, said that I like the Z axis and uh, x-axis. So one of these should let me, now let's go ahead and make the selection. Make sure I'm at the top of the stock and my x-axis direction. Oh, nope, face. And then one of my um, complaints is that this doesn't automatically uh, progress to the next. It would be nice if you could tab or or it just jumps to the next one since it doesn't. I, uh, I often end up picking. So let's go back to reverse X. Now I have my coordinate system in the upper left corner where I can uh, pick for it. So going on the, uh, the universal tooling plate, I would have primary datum is the tooling plate. Secondary datum would be two pins along the long side and one pin for repeatability on the short side. So primary, two pins on the secondary, one pin on the tertiary. And going down to the program name, uh, program one until we figure out what we're, um, what we're working, 2-23. And my work offset, G54, is either zero or one, and that picks up the um, basis of the job.
All right. So one of the things I need to upload to Canvas is the um, the, the Haas post that I use regularly. Um, now that I've modified it a little bit, we need to talk a little bit about modifying, but not tonight. Um, but I will uh, upload that so that you can be consistent with um, with what you're what you're seeing on the videos and the screen. Okay. So I have my position. Um, I said that the um, decision is that if I'm clamping here and here and maybe along this edge, I can um, I can get all of the drill operations in, but I'm maneuvering around clamps, so I don't really want to be flying around 100 100 thousandths above this part. I may not want to be five inches in the air, but I want to be able to clear the screw heads, the the clamp, uh, any of the um, you know, the the obstacles that uh, we might run into. So that's going to guide some of my decisions on the um, on the clearance planes and the um, the height and all that that stuff. All right. So the uh, the tap drill was here at uh, the four corners. So we'll start with the um, the drilling operations, and then uh, we'll come back to um, run the uh, the outside. Well, that was one I wanted to check real quick on the job. No. Nope. Somewhere in here, I know that I got this set as a default. I don't remember which one picked it up, though. Make all default. So the very last work offset, if I decide that, um, well, the only thing that would really be of issue is uh, the stock uh, being a, a model selection. If I don't generate a model every time, then I would have to change it. If my pattern is to um, to create that uh, that stock model, then all of this is going to stick. So I made all of the defaults, so I shouldn't have to come back and change this anymore in the um, as I'm setting up the job. All right, so we set that as um, um, set those parameters as the commonly used. All right, so now when I go into the uh, the new operation, I'm going to go for the drilling. And we're going to just set up for the drill. Um, I need to uh, go back and revisit the um, uh, the drill wizard. Uh, last couple times I've used it, I didn't have much success with it, so I got a little frustrated. And I'm just happy going through and doing drill operations, um, basically. So, so when I look at my tool library for the current part, um, I have the, the four tools. I'm not going to use those. I'm going to come back to by type. Um, pick my any drill. Uh, let's see. I want to. I don't really want to search uh, through everything, so I'm going to go to point two. No tool selected. How about 201? Okay. Maybe it needed the 20. All right. So we're going to use this drill for one operation, and then um, we'll come back. So. Um, I'm not going to go in and edit it at speed. All right, so 4,000 RPM, still below, well, right at. So high-speed steel at 200, 3,800 RPM. Um, might get a little squawking at 4,000. And then feed per revolution, we'll slow it down to 5 thousandths. And let's see, the retract feed rate. I don't hardly ever see it, but I just like to see those numbers consistent. Uh, that machine is um, is not running coolant, so I'll disable it, and then we won't see the MO8s uh, show up. But one of the nice things about the uh, the post is it puts um, um, the uh, the forward slash in front of the uh, the MO8 so that you can do a block delete and not have the coolant come on in any program. Um, as you're as you're going through the uh, the running it, um, so two options are to select the uh, the bottom of the hole as a contour, uh, or knowing that uh, the pockets, I'm going to select the bottom side. Um, but it's going the, the the issue that I that I have with picking the uh, the cylinders has always been that when I go back and pick a pocket. I get a um, I get a contour on the bottom. I get a contour on the top. It sees both sides, both top and bottom edge of the face. 
So I'm, I'm getting more into the habit of selecting the, uh, the cylinders. So I'm going to go with um, uh, the advantage of the, uh, the cylinder is that I can select the same diameter. So that finds the, the four to, uh, five tapped holes. And then I can go grab the next and the next. And then the issue with the countersink is it sees it as countersink's already there, and it's not. All right, so I'm going to have to address that. And then we'll go with those two. And I, I'm just planning on looping the, uh, the half-inch tool through most of these and coming back and finishing, so uh, I'm not really concerned with, uh, with those. But these are going to open up the, uh, the geometry so I can either bore or interpolate um, uh, the geometry into, into those holes. All right, so we're maneuvering around clamps. And this is the, um, the first drill operation. So normally I would set, well, let's go ahead and make some, uh, some defaults. So since this is an additive process where it's saying the top is zero, whole top is zero, Standard, that's going to work, except for in the case of the countersink, the whole top is sub-flush. Um, but we'll, uh, we'll leave that, the 0.2, the 0.2, and then for clearance height, we can go 0.8. But really, I don't want, uh, even at a 50 thousandths peck, that's four pecks before it ever contacts the material. So I would probably be more on the order of my standards being 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 0 0.9. So I would have a one inch slowdown. I would see it kind of do a stutter stop and then go to the retract plane or the, um, yeah, to the retract height. And um, let's see, from the, um, the whole bottom, uh, we do want this to break through. So drill tip through. And then um, we'll go another 10 thousandths. And that is a positive number. If you try to put a negative number in there, it will bark at you. The way I look at it is you're traveling in a negative direction. You're continuing to travel in that, that direction. So it is adding. It's, it's, it's going to be positive. Uh, it's going to be doing the positive number thing. All right. So I want to make all default. But now I'm I'm I've set that number so I don't have to um, to change it on the either the next drills or future drills because now it's in the system. But here I would want to at least reverse the numbers. All right, so the feed height stays at 0.1. So we will get a rapid, but it'll it'll have a slowdown plane, and then all of the tool movements will happen at 0.9 above the clamps, and then it will wrap it back to 0.1 for the next hole location. So I'm manipulating these to where um, if I have larger clamps, maybe I would put 1.4. So I have a 1.5 inch, and then 1.4 is where everything's going to travel around at. All right, so I can manipulate that however I, um, I need to. All right, and then the, um, the pecking, we're going to do... Um, uh, deep drilling, full retract, and 50 thousandths is a, is a good starting number. So I see those drills. I now have a starting hole in all of those, except I'm still wrapping into the countersink. All right, so as soon as I define that countersink, we're going to go back and instead of that clearance, uh, no, not the, um, the, the top being from whole top, it's going to go from model top or from stock top. We didn't include any stock, so stock and model are the same. It's kind of one of those pick. All right, so now the green, the circle is up at the top, and I'm not wrapping into into my part. All right, so we'll go ahead and get the uh, the tap out of the way. So new operation, drilling, drill, and we'll keep those um, in combo. So by type. And I don't know if, okay, so I um, need to know a little bit about the, uh, the decimals, or we need to expand out a little bit to where we can see. And this was the, uh, the quarter 20. So I can select for it. And my preference is to stay in increments of the 20. 
So 20 times 10 would be 200, would give me 10 inches per minute. 400 would give me 20 inches a minute, and that's about my comfort zone. So the, the feed rate is hard-coded based on the, uh, the pitch of the tap. We don't get to select, um, select those. And then I want to go with the, uh, the cylinder again so that it finds all of the, the same size holes. And we're still maneuvering around clamps. Uh, but instead of the, uh, the whole bottom, I'm going to go from model top. We'll turn off the breakthrough because I set that as my default. I'm going to uncheck that. And then instead of worrying about chip pack up because standard spiral point is going to push the chip ahead into the bottom of that hole, um, I'm going to say that we're going to take the, um, uh, the, the zip gun, the hand drill, and we'll finish, finish drill this. So if I go to minus 0.4 from the top of the part, then I should see that number and know that it's not going to go, go through. The drill's a little bit deeper. Any of the chips that are packed up are not going to be crammed into the bottom of the hole. And then it's set for, it found the tapping cycle. And we'll go ahead and accept. Was that the second hole tap? Or just the well, we'll go back and, no, oh, it's not showing. All right, so with the whole wizard, you see the cosmetic threads. So I'm not sure why the cosmetic threads didn't come over to the assembly, but uh, there were only the, the four or five 201 holes and everything else was a little bit different size. All right, so go ahead and save the document since it's popping up. All right, so we're going to do a couple of these as contour and a couple as bore, just to kind of compare and contrast. All right, so we got the uh, the holes in, we got them started, we tapped um, tapped those, and we'll go into um, the new operation 2D milling. And set for the uh, for the contour first. We'll go back into our library, pick for the um, the quarter inch, and actually, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to adjust for some some tool change issues uh, later on anyway. So we'll uh, take what we get. I'm looking at this thinking I should either drop the half inch in uh, first and open these up so that I don't have to do a secondary tool change when I'm in the quarter inch, that it'll come in and it'll finish into the corners, and we'll be finishing all with the uh, the same tool. All right, but we'll be roughing with larger tool, more step over, more rigidity. The feeds and speeds that I set in the library initially are carried over, so I don't really have to do anything. I'm going to stay with the disabled on this um, for, the, uh, for the flood. And this being the contour, I'm going to go ahead and pick, and the arrow is to the uh, the inside, and down, so the downside would be that uh, on the contour, it's not seeing it as a uh, the the bore sees it as a whole, knows that it's always going to be interior. Um, depending on selection, I may get an arrow pointed to the outside. Uh, so let's see. I think all three of those are pretty close, so we'll do those three. And over to the um, to the edges. Oh, I did want to make the uh, the point that um, if you happen to grab the cylinder, so let me deselect that edge. If you grab the cylinder, I got two arrows. I have a top edge and a bottom edge. So that's always been kind of confusing for me as to why it why it makes that selection that way. But if I'm at the uh, the bottom, I, I select the bottom edge of my contour. That's the depth that it's going to run to. All right, so we're still working around clamps. And the from contour, maybe I'll go into my sacrificial plate, uh, five thousandths. All right, so we set a minus five thousandths. And so 500, um, then the finish pass will finish at um, the minus 0 0.505. Um, we should be okay to go ahead and engage compensation. Um, 
I'm going to go ahead and repeat the finish pass. So basically a spring pass, same number. But since this is going to be, I'm going to be telling this to spiral in, uh, that when it gets to the bottom, it will take one more cleanup pass uh, around, the, uh, around the part. And then we're not leaving any stock. We should be able to go right to, uh, to size. Uh, let's see. Well, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to tell it not to keep the tool down. And these numbers need to get pretty small. All right, we're not real tight, or like the um, the two in the upper at um, close to the five sixteenths. We're not really uh, really tight on that. But if it fails, it's probably going to be because our lead in is um, has grown too much. And then I'm going to give it the ramp, and we're going to tell it ten degrees on the ramp. And let's see if it comes up with a description. Max ramping angle and max step down. So whichever is um, uh, the greater, well, that's a good question. I'm not sure if it's greater or lesser of the two. Probably less. Um, per revolution, tool load to be constrained when doing full width cuts during wrapping. So um, point one is still pretty aggressive. So we'll see which one it uh, picks. And then the same thing is I've already got all of that feed, retract, um, uh, clearance plane set. I really don't want to see this um, doing a lot of turns. So once I get the tool set, 30 to 50 thousandths brings it that much closer to the part. So I'm not watching those, uh, those helix. All right. So we get it engaged. And depending on where the clamp is, I shouldn't uh, be running in, but all, all of a sudden seeing those rapiding between the holes, I'm a little nervous. All right, so I need to go back and find that parameter. I thought I told it. Um, uh, we allow preserve rapid movements, keep tool down, lead in, double check. Ah. That's why is because I was changing, I changed the number in the drill. I have not changed my number in the contour. All right, so we go back to that value. Now I see those extended rapids. I'm, I'm happier that even though I know in the middle of the part I'm not anywhere near that clamp, I don't want to find out the hard way that I was closer to it than I thought. Or you changed your mind during the setup. I changed my mind during the setup. Or somebody else set it up and put the clamp in a different position and you know didn't didn't follow along. So all right, so we'll pick a couple for the um well, let's do one more with the bore and look at the uh, the roughing passes. So I have all of those settings in place. I don't really want to start a brand new operation, have to go through it again. So right clicking and either control d or come down to duplicate gives me the exact same operation that i can go back to my model clear the selections and we did one two three so i'm going to do these two i think those were the were the same and the uh, the issue here is that hole being a little bit smaller that hundred thousandths that 10 degree may be too aggressive and i won't know until i cut it and and um, see where it uh, falls out at. All right, so the uh, the ramp on this one, maybe we'll slow it down to 50 thousandths or 10 degrees and uh, be able to see what the, um, the difference in the helix is. All right, and then one more, and then we'll do the last one with the, uh, the bore. So duplicate and edit and we'll clear and probably should have done the uh, the first one but whatever so on roughing passes i'm going to tell it to uh, to take the step over and on a quarter inch tool probably a max of um, 50 thousand so um half well we're we're telling it to um to ramp in and then it's going to be full engagement. We're not telling it to do any multiple depth steps. So we're kind of in that high speed mode that 50 thousandths may even be too much. So let's go 10% of the tool at 25 thousandths. All right, have a starting point. Uh, 
Um, so the issue here is this is enough big that I will either leave an island around that, um, that hole or I will have a big enough chunk of material that I really want to make sure that that goes away. So let's see. So it found it. It made two passes, and apparently it wasn't as um, as large as I thought it was. All right, but I can take that that second step. It is jumping up, and it's going to do a, a second helic, helical pass in. Did that um, <clears throat> previous contour? Did it catch both holes? It looked like you found the third one. I bet you selected two holes. Yeah, I did. I did. So where was that one at? Um, there is a number somewhere, and we ended up. I ended up on the uh, the forum. I don't think it was the plus or minus. Need an entry. Now I'm not going to be able to find it. I have to go back to my other defaults and uh, figure out where where that one was hiding. That was the skin pass. Minimum cutting radius. No. I know one of these I had to put a really small number in and then it would recognize the other um, the other geometry, but they are there. So I thought they'd um, they'd fix that. Apparently not. So let's generate the tool path and see if it catches up. It says it's complete. Not quite. All right. So you know in that case I would probably duplicate that, take one of the one out, and force it to do the um, the second. Interesting. All right. So if I find that number tomorrow, I will um, put it in the notes. <laughs> All right, so going into the uh, the new operation, uh, and this one's uh, 2D milling, but we're going down to the bore operation, and we're still in tool three, our quarter inch end mill. Uh, the model is going to, let's see, we did that one. Oh, the um, helix. All right, so same type of issue that we had with the drill is that we're sub flush and we haven't countersunk yet. Go ahead and put in the point ones, the point nine. Um, the top is, well, we probably don't want to do that. So this is missing the feed height. All right, so retract height. Well, we're gonna have to see the, see where this lands. And then from hole bottom, and that may have been my issue with bore. I couldn't remember what um, what exactly was uh, was the problem, especially when clamp. I really want that feed because I don't want the retract height, which is going to allow me to clear, uh, and then feed back to the start. So, well, let's see. Well, this is one hole, so I'm not really going to see it on uh, this geometry. So. Since this one didn't cut, we're going to add it to the bore. All right, because it's going to it's going to read the bore geometry size, and it doesn't matter that they're five or ten thousandths off. And um, let's see, thread pitch or step down. We'll stay with that uh, fifty thousandths or ten degrees, and we'll go ahead and let it set where climb cut. And leads, if it has enough, it will generate. All right, so very tight, not so tight, but the rapid between. And then um, the issue is that if we come back over to our clearance and say, I really want that to, uh, to jump up. So the clearance height was um, from the track, okay. Point. Uh, now if I reverse those like I did the other other group, point nine and point one. 
Okay. Well, that one still plunged into the part. So I still have one more uh, one more number to check. From top stock, okay, from hole, we're going to go to model top then. And now I have the top of the, the bore happening at the, the stock. So it, it rapided without the uh, the feed plane. And so it must be the, uh, the well, what is, where is that one picking up at? And minimum distance, part service, so it must be the 80 thousandths that's set there. Would be I'll be interested to see where that um, that picks up in the um, in the code. All right, so did I hit everything? Probably not. Well, one form or fashion, we hit everything. All right, so we're going to save that, and then we still need to do the countersink. So new operation drilling and drill library we saw before that when i went to the uh, the countersinks um, there wasn't anything really in there so now i find it again ah, we do have a quarter inch quarter inch 90 degree and um, i need something just a little bit bigger so let's go ahead and duplicate one more and we'll edit it, put it over in zero. And uh, let's see, for a 5 16, it's probably going to need at least a three quarter. So I'm going to call it a one inch, 82 degree. All right, so some something that makes sense. Going into the cutter, one inch, tip angle is 82. All right, so as I use these and I add these to the um, to the mix, then they'll be available for next time. So that big, we're going to slow it down. Oh, and these are feed rates anyway, so we're not going to be doing too much in the way of milling. All right, so this time, uh, since it's uh, not one of my tool fours, and it was set to zero when I select it, it's going to add the next tool list or next next available number. Oh, let's go back in the library. So actually where did it add it? Alright, so the one inch eighty two. Alright, we're gonna have to see after we apply it. Oh, and a thousand? Yeah, got a little carried away there. So let's stay at two hundred. And then make sure that everything else stayed at uh, at two. And then for this to calculate the uh, the countersink, I really want to be on that um, on that angle. And it got a little deep. Hmm. So let's uh, reverse the numbers again. Point one. Point nine. We'll turn off the uh, the drill through, and that looks a little bit better. All right, so the drill tip through the bottom was forcing it way deeper, and we want to um, let's do the counter boring dwell and wrap it out, and we'll put um, two seconds of, of dwell for it to clean up. So the choice is to peck and go a little bit faster or plunge and go a little bit slower this kind of depends on the material and what we're cutting we're still assuming that we're in uh, in the aluminum your dwell or just leaving it it's gonna for the the two second or for a you know good good two count it's just gonna clean up that surface as opposed to you know any any chatter anything would give it a chance to um uh, tool deflection load would allow it to um, uh, to settle. All right, 2D milling. We're going to go for adaptive clearing, and um, as opposed to, we'll do one with the other uh, pocket. So let's do the, uh, the the slot with the uh, the pocket, 
And I think we'll see that in this uh, rectangular uh, pocket, the adaptive clearing will have a, a different effect. All right, so we'll go to the, um, to the 3 8 tool. Have all of our numbers from the, uh, the tool library. And the model is the, the bottom, making sure that the arrow is in the, on the cutting side. If not, then we're going to reverse. All right, so making sure it's interior to, to make the cut. Uh, we're going to go with our same numbers, so the point 0.1. Um, I'm not going to necessarily make these uh, the defaults. Next time I encounter it, it'll get a it'll get a default. And from contour, maybe a minus 0 0.005. And um, there is no uh, there's no finish on the uh, the pocket, or at least we haven't told it finish passes yet. Uh, for this to uh, to step out is going to be a little bit aggressive um, because of the uh, the transition. Um, let's go with um, 0.2, so half half D, half the diameter. See what it has for the finish pass. One finish pass, and we'll leave ten thousandths on the wall for it to finish with. And we'll put the leads. Don't necessarily want to repeat. And then um, nothing on the floor. Still going a half inch deep with a 3 8 inch mill without the, um, the adaptive. Um, that pocket makes me a little bit nervous. So we we'll take it in at least uh, two passes. So the step down, 0.25. Um, no floor finish uh, step and no finish. And then finish only at the final depth. All right, otherwise, take a pass, finish, take a pass, finish. All right, preserve, keep tool down. Um, those aren't too bad. We'll let it uh, stay with the uh, the helix. Still going to go with the um, slightly more aggressive. And 50 thousandths. Starting 30 thousandths above the part, and there's no ramp radial, and the uh, the max uh, helical ramp diameter. We'll use uh, we'll use that up. All right. So since it's on the helix, it's going to finish on the wall, and hopefully that is wide enough. We did um, I think it was 0.75. So the slot, radius of 3 8 0.75 on the mix. We should just have enough to, uh, to overlap there. Uh, looking at it end on, we have the ramp, and then we have the finish just to the outside. So I like to have a little bit more control. If I'm not happy with the, um, the code, I will be back into the program doing a secondary contour to have a little bit more control over that, that contour specifically. So I didn't really necessarily have to tell it that this was a pocket because I could have got this uh, same result with the uh, the contour pass and telling it to do a, um, well, I don't know if it would have stepped over. Anyway, we'll, um, I'll have to think about that one. All right, so this one being bigger and stepping in, we'll go with the, uh, the adaptive clearing. Still in the feeds. Model will be the uh, the bottom. Um, shouldn't really need the uh, the stock contours. It may bark at me here and tell me to pick something, but um, we have um, we have stock. And we'll go with the minus five thousandths again. All right, and then step over for the three eighths tool. I'm going to stay with the 25 thousandths, but we're going to go through. So maybe 10 thousandths on the, uh, the wall, nothing on the floor. And then rapids, uh, least, lead in, lead out. Uh, let's stay with the, uh, the 5 degrees or 50 thousandths.
Let's see, was that? No, that's clearance height. So I've been making that 1.03. And we'll see if it barks. All right, so a couple of rapids. So it's going to work its way into the corner and then wrap it out, go pick up the next one, go um, go into each of those corners and, and pull it out. Um, so the advantage here is that I should be able to come back to this feed rate and at least double it. All right, do I want to start by doubling it? Probably not. Once I get it in the material and I can either override the feed rate and uh, potentially change it at the control, then I'll come back and adjust it. Uh, once we come up with a, a number that is ejecting the chip and able to uh, to make that cut. All right, so then going back in, 2D contour. Nozzle, you know, besides your coolant, you could just put a nozzle that's blowing the hole to make sure that that. Well, on the, the TM, we're standing there with the air gun or with our, our uh, paintbrush, and we're trying to blast the chips out that way. Mm -hmm. um, and not all coolants, uh, if you don't get it in the right position, um, there's still the, the washing machine effect where the, um, the chips in the bottom before they're ejected are just getting recut and ground up against the surface and, mm -hmm. you know, those, those types of things. So it kind of depends on the machine. Um, you know, through spindle coolant is awesome. Not everybody has the high pressure and everything, and the halo systems are nice. Not not every no coolant system is going to be perfect for every application. Well, sometimes there really is nothing, no better alternative than standing there with the WD-40 or, <laughs> or whatever. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. Is you you kind of take whatever you get, and um, or the coolant tank's a little bit low and. Uh, you know, it, it starts uh, sputtering a little bit. There's, you know, there's always all those fun things that can happen. All right, so kind of jump through. Oh, I'm going to control size, so where comes on. And that's going to get set out the control. And we'll go ahead and look at the contour pass. So don't really like that it's in the middle. We'll see what it looks like if I start closer to an edge. So entry position. We'll put it into a corner and see what it can calculate. All right, so a little bit off of the edge, not quite at that corner, but as close. Um, you know, if there's a little bit of blemish line, we'll uh, you know just have to, to see what it does. All right, so stopping the machine. New operation, manual NC. We're going to tell it to uh, my best um, best process has been to force the tool change and accept, and then we're going to look at this code and see if it uh, if it plays out. But we'll force the tool change, and then I'm going to insert another operation manual, and this one um, is just going to pick up the um, the comment. Oh, can't type. And what I want in there is um, the uh, the bring the table forward so I can change the uh, the clamps, All right? Because it'll do everything but bring the table forward, which I find kind of annoying. <laughs> so D fifty three Y zero. Oh, and it's automatically going to uh, put the parentheses in, so I'm getting ahead of myself. What I would really like to see in here is something that just says text, and I could type in whatever I want it to do and have it insert that text in, in place. So I have an enhancement request. Yeah, put put in my G code, put in my parentheses, you know, whatever notes I'm gonna gonna generate, tell it exactly what I want and where I want it. All right, so basically the force tool change machine stop is to change the clamp from the outside. And get a couple of clamps into the, the holes or across the, uh, the geometry and uh, get this cinched up so that we can run around the outside in one shot. So when you put that comment, because the program stops, then you just do the whatever it is. When, uh, yeah, when the edit comes up, I'll see that and I'll take and copy and paste that G53Y0 at the, uh, just past the Z0. Okay. But this is a modification that I made in that post to make this work. So you know, we got to, you know, whichever post we're, we're going to generate from, 
that's where we're going to go back and take a look at it and, and go through the process. So one more operation, 2D milling, 2D contour. We'll let it find its way all the way around. The arrow is to the interior, so that means that I will be cutting good material. So reverse. Um, the other clamp op uh, option is that I have clamps on this side. I need to change the clamps to the outside. Then I would want to turn off the tangent propagation and the propagate along Z so that I could select just the items that I want to include. So, you know, maybe along this edge, we do another force tool change stop, switch the clamps over, and then, you know, basically we're grabbing on the outside. Uh, for expediency here, we're going to run around the entire part. Stay with my clearance uh, for the clamp, 0 0.9, 0 0.1. We'll go the minus five thousandths. And um, yeah, we'll go ahead and set the, the wear because I am going to tell it to do the repeat the finish pass. Oh, and then I wasn't paying attention, did not select the library tool, so I ah, did not add, um, add a number for the tool. Hmm. All right, so we'll have to go fix that. All right, so got the, uh, the half inch tool. Clearance, wear is set, and no roughing passes. So coming through this level, it's going to be pretty, um, pretty heavy cut. I'm going to go ahead and turn the ramp on uh, because I can always elevate the speed if it's taking too long to get around. But uh, rather than telling it to step down, the ramp is going to be a consistent tool load all the way. So if I do um, on the length of this, um, I believe that angle is from start to finish. So let's go up to 20 degrees or uh, we'll set it kind of midway, 0.2, whichever comes first. And we'll go ahead and see what that looks like. All right. So I can, if I was going to do a step and repeat, I would probably do this in a minimum of two, two steps. Uh, with the ramp, I'm going to have consistent loading. It is kind of uh, starting and finishing at some weird spots. So that would be one where I'd go back again and look at the entry position. Let's say give me a slightly better entry position. And it may not hit that, uh, that location exactly. Well, that time it did. Uh, but it will get as close as it can to it. And then my lead out over on the other side. I'm less concerned about that. All right, so one quick note is if this works and I'm happy with it, I'm going to highlight both of those and I'm gonna save this to a template. I wanna reuse this. So right click and store as template. This should find it, so I've set a machine stop. Um, so I'm just gonna call this whatever I did. Um, so apparently I've made one already. I don't have permissions for that location. Nice. All right, well, um, that's why when we find locations, well, I do have permission to save in that location. What are you talking about? All right, I don't know where it was going or what it was doing then. <laughs> All right, but now if I need to put in anywhere else in this mix, uh, let's see, the other one was the library. So when I pick that, maybe because I set it up as a custom, that should have uh, pulled the next available, but um, we're going to override so that it has consistent. So everything that's in use, oh, we didn't do the, uh, the edge break or the, um, the, the part. So, well, I have the clamps. We already went to the outside. so. New operation, 2D milling, still going to be a contour. Jump back into that library, grab tool 4. And we're going to see if it lets me do the edge break around the outside. All right, so basically a deeper. Uh, we're going to stay with the, the clamp. And this gets set as... 
if it recognizes it, it gets set as a chamfer. And we're going to give it a chamfer depth of, let's go 10 thousandths. And then how much be more beyond the tool so that it's not, if we have a flat on the end of the tool, we don't necessarily want to go right to the tip. Uh, we're going to have to see where, where those numbers play out. But usually 10 thousandths will get me started. And then uh, lead ends. And we'll watch that run around. So since I wasn't paying attention when I selected the model, I now have a nice groove around the outside of my part without actually deburring anything. So back over to the model, make sure that we're selected, reverse the direction so the arrow is on the outside, let it regenerate, something happened to the drill, that one, start, stop, and that looks pretty good. All right, so our tools, whatever I did on, uh, on that one, we'll do the, um, I like the stock. Oh, we'll go ahead and tell it to generate the toolpath so that everything's current. Do the stock simulation. And it's not going to show me the machine stops. I don't really want to see the holder. And that was way too fast. So we'll back it up and go again. Okay, that's way too slow. <laughs> That one's right at the edge. Pretty close. And then the rapids, once it gets out to the corner, works its way in. Yeah, the contour wasn't able to get in there. All right, so it's not going to go into those corners. So that would be a find out why. Mm -hmm. All right, so what to do with the projectiles? Since this is a ramp down, it should be pretty flimsy, but there's potential for vibration and on, the, um, on each of those corners. So if I'm okay with uh, those breaking free and just kind of coolant pushing them away, um, if this is a harder material that we risk damaging the, um, the tool or damaging the part, I may want to turn those to dust or at least less of a, uh, less of a projectile. All right, so last, um, last things here are to generate the, uh, the setup sheet, which in this case was the HTML. Oh, they buried it uh, nice and deep for me. Okay, so tools and directions. So I haven't tried to save that as a PDF or do something with it. So why don't we um, yeah, we'll stay with um, nope, Adobe PDF. All right, so we'll be able to get that back. I went over to. Right, so show up. All right, so now we have it saved out of the HTML. And then last is to post the code. And parameters wise, um, let's see, we're in the uh, the generic cause, so I want to check. And since that's not my location, then I guess it doesn't. Um, doesn't really matter. I'm going to have to um, upload to uh, to Canvas, and on the next program, we'll um, we'll double check for those um, those retracts. Um, sequence numbers on tool change preload tool no. It's an umbrella. Optional stops yes. So after each tool change, it will automatically put in an MO1. Sequence number start, uh, sequence number increment. 
uh, show sequence numbers? No, I haven't used sequence numbers for a while now. And just scroll back to the four parameters. <laughs> And we'll overwrite uh, program one. Don't know what that one was. All right, so drill operation, drill. Um, it is using the G53. So maybe this will work after all. And some down, somewhere down here. So line 4000. <laughs> And actually, we're just going to go find, and I called it machine, so, or stop or something, so we'll go next. All right, so it goes G53, does the M M01, so it did not put in the M00. Oh, well, I was say, I, I got it to do that without putting in, hmm. so it is in rapid. Well, worst case, M00. If that's all I have to do to the program, well, I got one more. Oh, we didn't ever turn coolant on, so I guess I don't need the coolant. <laughs> all right, but if I you know, copy that and I put in the force the machine stop, when it comes down to the end, it has, it has that. Interesting that it jumped over to the, um, to the center of the part in X, but um, that'll be interesting to see what it does, what it did in that post. All right. Well, we'll call that good. It's not complete by uh, any means. There's refinement. There's other things that we'll need to do, but that'll get you a few more operations to uh, to work from, and uh, see where we can go.